Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. We continue to follow the developing news from East Lansing. Michigan State football coach Mel Tucker is suspended after sexual harassment allegations against him became public. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Kim DiGiulio. And I'm Rhonda Walker. Those allegations are the ongoing investigation. We're detailed in a USA Today report, and we're still working to learn more about the circumstances surrounding this suspension. So let's get out to Sean Lay. He's been doing some digging with us, and let us know what you found out today. Truly, let's dig right in. A very complicated issue here. Let's get everyone up to speed. We're talking about MSU head football coach Mel Tucker, one of the highest paid coaches in all of football or sports when it comes to colleges. Coached a game right here at Spartan Stadium on Saturday, a win against Richmond, and then a bombshell report the next morning, yesterday morning, Sunday, of sexual harassment against the coach that essentially forced MSU to act yesterday. So here's the timeline that's really important here. We're talking about going back to April 28th of 2022. Brenda Tracy, she is a prominent voice against sexual harassment, sexual assault on college campuses. She is a rape survivor who worked with Coach Tucker in speaking to the young men on MSU's team and on campus about how to conduct themselves with women, how to look for and report any harassment against women, keeping classmates women safe, essentially. April of 2022, same time here, Tracy herself says Coach Tucker, who she worked with, spoke to her on the phone in sexually graphic ways clearly and loudly she says performing a sex act it was obvious tucker called it consensual phone sex basically admitting to the situation here tracy told investigators she absolutely froze in that moment on the phone as a survivor herself of sexual assault she made what is called a title nine complaint with msu in december of this year december we're going back here that led investigators to launch an investigation that was complete in july so a couple of months before the football season even msu still allowing coach tucker to coach the spartans heading towards an October hearing where both sides would be heard here. Then MSU suspended Tucker without pay yesterday after details of the allegations were made public by USA Today. So let's talk to Matt Friedman. He's co-founder of strategic communications firm Tanner Friedman. He says one of the massive issues here that's standing out. Could MSU have acted long before Sunday when it appears it's now reacting to a report in the media? One of the things that they did not do very clearly is try to get in front of the inevitable. Why not? Big, big yeah. stories leak. They just do. And big institutions need to prepare for these almost inevitable leaks. And it looks like they didn't prepare for that. So when the leak happened, they were caught off guard and had to scramble on a Sunday. Back here live, scrambling on a Sunday, suspending the coach, but also answering very few questions about when they knew of this really rough allegation here against the coach with a woman so prominent as Tracy. And why didn't they act sooner? And we're being told that the investigation was going on. Some in MSU say it's still ongoing and not many knew exactly the details here. Rhonda and Kim, until the USA Today report came out. We have a lot of questions, obviously, here. We're going to continue to ask the questions here on campus. Interim coach for football going forward has been named. Back to you. Absolutely. Still a lot of questions. Thanks for that report, Sean. And stay with us on ClickOnDetroit.com for as this story continues to develop. The investigative journalist who broke the story is giving us some context on his reporting today. Yes, Christy McDonald had an opportunity to speak with that journalist. What do you have to say? Well, Rhonda and Kim, I spoke with Kenny Jacoby just about an hour ago, and he is that investigative reporter at USA Today, and he specializes in Title IX reporting and also sexual harassment at colleges and universities. He talks about the reaction since the story broke yesterday morning. Can you tell us initially how you got the tip on this? I know this is the kind of reporting that you specialize in. Yeah, um, I don't want to go too much into the, the process of how we got the story, but I will say that um, Brenda is the one who contacted us uh, about the piece, and then she shared the case documents with us that allowed us to write the piece. What has the reaction been the last 24 hours? I'm seeing a lot of outrage um, from students, um, people who work at MSU, alumni, and just community members in East Lansing. Um, a lot of people are, are very upset that this uh, seems to have the stench of a cover-up, given that uh, this case has been going on for eight, nine months, and you know we are just hearing about it uh, publicly for the first time yesterday. And then, of course, uh, the suspension came down 
uh, nine months into the case. And so I think given uh, all the issues that MSU has had uh, with sexual misconduct over the years, um, this doesn't sit well with a lot of people that um, this is how it's coming out and uh, that it's being handled this way. Now we talk about transparency at Michigan State, the next questions that need to be answered here and really the process that is going to be playing out in the next couple of weeks. My full interview with Kenny Jacoby will be coming up at 1230 today on the Daily Plus Live that's streaming on Local 4. I'm going to send it back to you guys. Oh, it's so interesting to get his perspective. Mm -hmm. We're looking forward to that, Christy. Thank you. Meanwhile, it was a comfortable weekend across Metro Detroit. Cooler temperatures than what we've been used to, but it yeah. really made for a great weekend outside mm -hmm. to get out Cooler, and about. but not cold, which yeah. we'll take, <laughs> Ashley. Exactly. Yeah, that's really the beauty of September, that you have more comfortable afternoons, still the cool nights, and then we flip the switch to October, and then we know what's ahead after that. But right now, downtown Detroit still getting some sun as the clouds are pushing in from the west, but in downtown, we're holding onto the sun as long as we can. You can see it shining over Huntington Place. Everyone gearing up for the auto show. 69 degrees in Detroit, same in Ann Arbor, 68 in Port here on 69 in Adrian. But as we look at satellite and radar, you can see how that moisture has crossed mid Michigan. So it's just a matter of time that those showers will make its way here. Um, we're starting to see that cross Lansing, but we do have mostly cloud cover across southeastern Michigan. But the far east side here in Detroit, we're getting a few peaks of the sun through those clouds. We'll zoom in just a little bit closer where we have a little bit more sunshine as you get closer to Port here on otherwise by Metro Airport overcast skies. And then we have rain showers hours by Lansing, Owasso, and that's pushing eastward as we speak. So increasing clouds with a few afternoon showers possible today. We'll see a couple of those spotty showers probably about three o'clock onward with 74 for the afternoon high the week ahead. What you can expect well this afternoon and going into parts of your Tuesday that makes these next two days the wettest days of the week and today's the warmest. However, even though we take a tumble Wednesday, we get more sunshine come Thursday and Friday. So we'll break down the timing of when this rain exactly pushes out coming up in just a few minutes. A gravel hauler rolled over on M14 today over in Plymouth, closing several lanes of the highway during the morning commute. It was an absolute mess. Sky 4 was over the scene just before 9 a.m. You can see the gravel all over the road and that truck right on its side there. No word right now on what caused that truck to crash. There's also no word on any injuries. We'll keep you updated on this. And then over in Oakland County, the eastbound lanes of M59 were closed this morning after a crash involving three vehicles. Please say the crash happened around 535 AM, but this was the scene just after 730. A 25 year old Brandon Township man was traveling westbound on M59, crossed over the median, striking two vehicles. One person suffered only minor injuries. The 25 year old and one other person involved are in critical condition. If you witness this crash, you're asked to call Oakland County Sheriff's Office non emergency line. One person was shot and killed in southwest Detroit this morning after an argument became deadly. Detroit police say it happened at a bar around 2 o'clock in the morning. The victim is only described as an adult male. The shooter fled the scene. If you know anything about what unfolded here, you can contact Crime Stoppers and remain anonymous. New at noon. The American Red Cross is asking Americans to roll up their sleeves. The nonprofit organization says its emergency blood donation supplies are critically low. And the Red Cross provides about 40% of the United States blood supply and blood components to hospitals. The low supply comes from a drop in donations and back to back months of climate driven disasters. It needs to collect about 12,500 donations each day to meet patient needs. So hopefully you can donate. It's a great thing to do. Yes, it is. Memorials remembering the victims and are taking place here at home and all across the country. In Oakland County, it is the annual Michigan Fallen Heroes Memorial Ceremony in Pontiac, where we will remember officers and firefighters in Michigan who lost their lives in the line of duty. That gets underway at 2 o'clock this afternoon. In Farmington, the Boy Scouts of America will hold a ceremony and along with other activities at Riley Park. Officer of the Year honors will be given to police officers, firefighters, and public Public safety officers that goes from 2:30 until 7:30 this evening. Over in New York, a Solomon, Solomon Bell toll and a moment of silence at 9:03 a.m. The moment Flight 175 struck the World Trade Center's South Tower. Let's get to NBC's Rahima Ellis. She has more from near ground zero in New York City. 22 years ago, America stood still. Today, the nation is taking another somber pause 
to remember almost 3,000 people who died in the terrorist attacks here in America. President Biden is not attending memorial services at 9-11 memorial sites. Instead, he's at a military base in Anchorage, Alaska, returning from his overseas trip to India for the G20 summit in Vietnam. He is expected to deliver remarks and meet with over a thousand service members, first responders and their families, and in many ways celebrating their call to service, as many of them felt that call to service following the attack on 9-11. Vice President Kamala Harris was here attending the commemoration ceremony in New York. And in honor of the day, the Biden administration is awarding $4 million in funding to the National 9-11 Memorial and Museum here in New York City. The tragedy of this attack remains for so many families. Tens of thousands of them are dealing with health issues as a result of the attacks that day. In addition, more than 4,000 people have died from 9-11 related illnesses. It's a reminder that this tragedy goes on. Despite the fact it's been 22 years, people here cannot forget.